Welcome back to the news on Channel Television, broadcasting live from Lagos. We're still on business news. It's a few days to the end of June, and the Nigerian equities market started off on a bearish note as a spillover of profit taking continued today. Here's Boladia Kinwali with a trading analysis. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. The final trading week in June closed negative as profit taken dragged the Osher index down by 2.64%, while the market's capitalization fell by nearly 280 billion naira to 10.29 trillion naira. A total of 362.4 million shares were traded in 4,074 deals worth over 3.91 billion naira in response to sell pressure on the exchange. The top three most actively traded stocks were Net Insurance, JT Bank and FBN Holdings with 90.7 million, 56.1 million and 36.6 million ish. Market breadth was largely bearish as the price chart recorded a total of 16 gainers against 41 losers. The top gainers in percentage terms were Fitzin with 9.91 percent, Jillas Berger with 5 percent and UPL with 4.78 percent. On the decliners table, United Capital, Zenith Bank and Fort Oil laid out the price losers. And that's it in the stock market reports. I am Bolaji Akimwali. Thanks a lot, Balaji. Our global equities were mostly in mixed sentiments at the close of today's session as the Brexit contagion continues to impact negatively on world markets. Let's take a look at these figures. That's business news tonight. The news in tech continues the moment. I am Adeshawa Josh. You first. First Bank. The Nigerian Prison Service is to carry out an appraisal of the security arrangements at all the nation's prisons. The Minister of Interior, retired Lieutenant General Abdul Rahman Dumbazo, revealed this when he visited the Kujate Prison in the Federal Capital Territory. His visit follows the escape of two inmates from the Kujie prison during a jailbreak at the weekend. General Dumbazal explained that the new arrangement prevents a recurrence of the incident. When I was here, I noted uh, some gaps, security gaps. I made my observations. To, uh, then it was with the former uh, CG prisons, with the present controller who is here. Who is here. And I noted my, you know, the security gaps, and I told them precisely what to do. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, uh, this has occurred. Uh, the the controller general presence has already started uh, investigation into the matter, and I also will do everything possible to ensure that we reinforce security here and also to follow the routines. Following the routines is very important. Time now for sports news with Charles Iruka. Thanks, Kimba. The Nigeria Rugby Football Federation has invited 23 players for a two-week training camp ahead of the pre-qualifiers for the 2019 Rugby World Cup. And the two foreign-based players, Christian Oga and Thank God Okafo, were invited to join their home-based colleagues. The Black Stallions are expected to depart for Morocco on July the 11th. They'll take on Mauritius on the 13th before the all-important clash with the host country Morocco on the 16th. In soccer, Super Eagles striker Emmanuel Emenike has returned to Fenerbahce in Turkey to begin pre-season with the team in Istanbul. The big, powerful striker who played on loan last season at UAE side Al Ain and EPL side West Ham United will play for Fenerbahce in the coming season. The team has lined up a series of friendly games for July against an Iranian side, Romanian clubs CSMS Lassi and Sparta Prague. 
and to the European Championship Italy this evening put up a dominant performance as they beat defending champion Spain 2-0 in Paris to reach the quarterfinals of Euro 2016. Antonio Conte's side took the lead in the 33rd minute through defender Giorgio Chiellini before Graziano Pella's strike sealed a victory in injury time. Meanwhile, Iceland stunned England in the round of 16 of Euro 2016. England had taken the lead in just the fourth minute when Raheem Sterling was brought down in the penalty area, allowing Wayne Rooney to score from the spot. However, just 34 seconds after kickoff, Iceland equalized through Ragnar Sigurdsson, who lashed a flick on at the back post. It went from bad to worse for England when Colbyn Sigtorsen scored with Iceland's second attack of the match. Well, it's the worst defeat for England in a long time, and the first casualty is manager Roy Hodgson, who has resigned. And now to tennis, world number one and defending champion Novak Djokovic has eased past Britain. James Ward, 6-love, 7-6-6-4 in the first round of Wimbledon. The 29-year-old searching for his fourth title took the first nine games on his victory on his way to victory. World number 177, Ward, had recovered by taking the second set to a tiebreak of Djokovic's clash, shone through the service, looking to complete a calendar Grand Slam, having already won the Australian and French Open in 2016. That's game set and match on Sports News, and it's back to Gimba. South Africa's President Jacob Zuma has been asked to repay 3% of total money spent on upgrading his private home in 2009. The country's public prosecutor had ruled in 2014 that the president had benefited from the non-security renovations to his rural home in Kandla. When he failed to repay some of the money, the Constitutional Court ruled in March that he had violated the Constitution. It then gave the National Treasury two months to come up with a figure for Mr. Zuma to repay. The President has 45 days now to repay $509,000, which is the 3% of the total cost. The EU has rejected the possibility of informal negotiations with Britain concerning its exit from the Union until it initiates Article 50. Amara Chubani has more. The leaders have been meeting today in Berlin where they agreed on this. The three EU leaders, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, French President François Hollande and the Italian Prime Minister Matteo Renzi said they regretted Britain's vote to leave the EU but that they're in agreement that Article 50 of the European Treaties is very clear. It says a member state that wishes to leave the European Union has to notify the European Council and that only when this happens will the European Council issue issue guidelines under which an exit will be negotiated. To South Africa now, where President Jacob Zuma has been asked to pay back $509,000 to the government for the upgrades made to his private home. The South African Treasury says the president must pay the money within 45 days. A manslaughter investigation has been opened into the Egypt airplane crash that happened last month. Investigators say there is no evidence so far linking the incident to terrorism. Those are today's major headlines. It's back to you. And on entertainment news now, rapper Fouls wins his first BET Awards. Details of this and more with Bayo Wa Ogundeli. Many thanks. These are your trending entertainment stories. Rapper Fowles emerged Nigeria's big winner at the just-concluded BET Awards, which held in Los Angeles. The Karashika Kruna won the Viewer's Choice Best International Act Award, beating other nominees including MT, TK, MHD, Section Boys and Western. Yemi Alade and Wizkid, who both got nominated for the Best International Act Africa Award, lost out to Black Coffee, the first South African artist to get the nod. So we got Daniel K. Daniel. Daniela Okeke, Mercy Makjo, and Black are set to star in a new movie titled Obsessed. Produced and directed by Dabi Chimere, Obsessed tells the story of a woman who suffers from narcissistic personality disorder. So I want to be following you every morning to work so I can be saving my transport. You want to be following my husband every morning? Your children! 
Singer Banky W, comedian Ali Baba, Shola Shobowale, Ireti Doyle, Richard Mufedamijo, Beverly Naya, and a host of A-list entertainers are set to star in Ebony Life Films' romantic comedy, The Wedding Party. This is coming following the success of the B. Bandele directed flick, 50, which emerged Nollywood's biggest film in 2015. Set in Lagos, Nigeria, the wedding party tells the story of a 24-year-old art gallery owner and a fiancé, an IT entrepreneur who took a vow of chastity and are looking forward to a groundbreaking first night together as a married couple. The wedding party is being directed by Kemi Aritiba and will hit the cinemas this December. Well, that's it from me. Many thanks for watching. Let's head back now to the menus. And the main news again, an Abuja High Court today sacked Abia State Governor Okeze Bazo for tax evasion and directed him to vacate office immediately. However, in its reaction, the governor's camp insisted that the governor has committed no crime and has appealed judgment of the federal high court. Also, the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, and his deputy, Senator Ike Kweramadu, were today arraigned for alleged forgery. However, the Senate President accused federal government of pursuing a nefarious agenda. In its reaction, the presidency dismissed Senator Saraki's claims as pretentious and imaginary. And that's how it's been on the news at 10 tonight. I want to thank you so much indeed for being a part of it. On behalf of everyone here, have a splendid night, friends. Good night.